Okay, good morning everybody and another round of coffee and questions. And today's topic, we're going to bounce off of the last video I did on drill bits and we're going to talk about spade bits and Forestner bits. Now the first picture up, this is from Harbor Freight's website, $36.99 and you get this nice looking box and you get all these Forestner bits and they're made by Warrior. They go from a quarter inch up to two and an eighth. So the question is, are these good bits? No, I don't think that they are all that great. I own this set and I own another set we'll talk about in a minute. And I'll explain to you the differences between them. These are an okay set. I mean, if you're just like intermittently using them. But the question is, do you really need the whole set? I mean, you could buy these individually and you can buy much higher quality bits that were going to last you uh, so much longer. These are okay. They work. I'm not going to say that they don't but they're not that good for that many uses and then they start to dull very very quickly so i'm going to go straight to the questions and i'm going to answer them as we go through here and i'll show you the other set that i have and i'll explain to you the differences between the two so give me just a sec and we'll start okay so the first question is what are they designed to do exactly well they're designed to cut a nice clean round hole or, you know, mainly in wood. I mean, I wouldn't use these on metal. You'll ruin them in a split second. They're mainly used on wood. A nice, clean, round hole through wood is what they're primarily used for. I'm going to change the picture. There is a difference. There are three main ones that are used. And let me show you what the differences are, and we'll talk about each one as we go through them. So in regard to the three main types that we're talking about, the first one, I exploded this picture. This is a sawtooth, Forstner bit. And it makes aggressive cuts. And it's not good for doing like angle cuts or anything like that, but it will cut fast because these teeth are just like a saw, like on a table saw. So, okay, so these are the sawtooth. So when we go to questions, you'll understand. Now let me show you a couple of others that are common. Now this one's called a continuous rim or a continuous edge Forstner bit. Now this is going to cut much cleaner, nice clean cut. But you need to take your time when you're using these because it will build up heat faster. You don't want to build up too much heat, especially on these inexpensive bits. You'll ruin them. They'll become discolored. You're going to need to sharpen them, and that's a whole other topic. I'll do a video on sharpening Forrester bits on another time. But you want to take your time, especially on these inexpensive bits with this. Now let me show you the third one. Okay, this is the third one. It's called a wave bit, or a wave rim bit, or a wave rim Forrester bit. Anyway, you'll see it really, the cool part about this is you get the combination of both. You're getting that sawtooth but you're also getting that knife edge also. These are probably the, you know, the better picks between them, but it just depends on what you're doing because I have all three types. I use all three types, sometimes interchangeably because depending on what I'm working on, it really doesn't matter. And I just grab the size that I need and I go ahead and I use it. But those are the differences between the three. And they all have the hex shafts, which prevents slipping in your drill press or your hand drill. So those are all kind of standard across all these drill bits. And also, another note, with the Wave, you're going to have a cooler cut. It won't build up heat as fast, but it still builds up heat because a lot of these are just made out of simple carbon steel, the inexpensive ones especially, so take your time with them, like I said. Okay, let's move into some questions. So, which are the best? Well, probably, like I said, the Wave ones, but I don't let that stop me from buying any of these particular sets. On the cheap sets, how can, how can you prevent overheating? Well... I take your time and go slow. Let's say you got it on a drill press. I'd come down, cut for a few seconds, come up, let it spin, go down, cut a few more seconds, and keep doing that and relieve the chips. Those things will all help in keeping it cool and increase the longevity of the cutting edge. But remember, these are cheap. You know, they're from China. Um, they'll work, but, you know, they are what they are. They're inexpensive Forestner bits, but they will work. Uh, what do I think some of the best ones are that are out there? Um, fish, F-I-S-C-H, they're made in Austria, but these are expensive bits. They are very expensive, and I'm not using them in a production setting. I'm like a home hobbyist, home handyman type thing. So the inexpensive sets I can get away with easily. That was what the discussion's based on today, but these fish sets, you can look for them on Amazon or everywhere else. They're in the hundreds of dollars per set. That's probably out of most people's range of what they want to spend. So, but that gave you an answer to your question. Okay, so I went ahead and I changed the picture. So what do I think the best value is dollar for dollar out there? I think it really, it's going to be more the, this Porter cable set. 
and you get you know it's a 14 piece set so paying 37 as opposed to paying 53 i think you're much better off save a couple of more bucks and get the porter cable set now i have this set and i have the harbor freight set i can use both both work but what's a better quality and what is going to last me a lot longer is this porter cable set and the reason why i say that it probably is made out of a better grade steel um, whereas i think a lot of things coming out of china are made with a lesser grade steel and i just know from using these they're the quality and the cutting edges i mean they're not real rough and what i did with the harbor freight ones when i bought them to be honest they, they cut okay but they're not cutting that great and i sharpened them almost right away and then they worked better but you sit and think, well, I shouldn't have to do that when I'm buying something brand new. I agree with you, but that's what ended up happening. And with the Porter cable set, I didn't have to do that. They came incredibly sharp. I've used them easily two or three times longer than that Harbor Freight set without worrying about sharpening them. And as a matter of fact, there's a couple of bits in the set that I've never sharpened yet. I mean, it's still cutting, you know, perfectly fine. But that's the one thing I noticed between the two sets. Okay, uh, the question was, is like when I showed the last pictures, it's got a little spur tip on each one of these. You know, why is that there? Well, that's there to help you when you go to center to cut into something. Now, the one thing that I do, um, a lot of these, everybody goes, well, they're, they're self-centering. You can put them in a drill press, a hand drill, press onto the wood, and then just go ahead and hit the trigger and start cutting. And well, yeah, you can. I'm in the habit and I was taught I don't do that. I use like a center punch or something and I make that first initial hole or that punch rather not a hole I make a punch and then this spur drive will line up absolutely perfectly and I don't need to worry about it walking on me or moving and it doesn't matter if I'm using the drill press or I'm using my cordless so I'm saying it stabilizes the cut that's all um, well a lot of these problems were somebody's complaining that with the Harbor Freight set they ruined them kind of quickly They've got burn marks and bluing and all this stuff all over them. Um, my first reaction is you're probably using it wrong, okay? So everybody just wants to put these in a drill or drill press, flip it on, and just cut. You have to have the right speed set. Um, now, if you're not sure and you're not sure how to adjust things, take a look at your drill press. All drill presses pretty much have got different pulleys, and, and then you can adjust the belt for the speed. If you're not sure... How to set the speed according to what the drill bit manufacturer says easy thing is just default and go to a slow speed you can always bump it up a little using you know that belt adjustment but just start with a slow speed you'll be fine come down cut into it for a few seconds release it let it cool off cut it release it keep going back and forth and you work your way through it without tearing up and burning your bit that's my best advice right off the top and you especially want to do the start and stop action if you have it in a cordless drill or even a corded drill, you know, because you don't want to get this thing super hot. So just, you know, go in and out, in and out, in and out. You'll get through it. You're not in a rush and you'll save your bit and it'll increase the life of it a lot longer. Um, there's a comment here from somebody that's an apprentice, an apprentice electrician. I use Forrester bits all the time, you know, in my roughing work. Um, I think what you're trying to say is in construction work and so forth and you don't think they work all that great um they're really not meant for that you can use them for that but look let me show you something that would work for you much better and what they're designed for give me just a sec okay going back to your question this is what i would use if i were you these are called spade bits spade bits i mean to me it's real simple they're for construction and that's pretty much their, their intended use i wouldn't use them unless you got a project or something um, these pr these can produce rather a lot of tear out when you're coming through the other side of the piece of wood but they're great if you're having to you know put holes through two by fours to pull wire or whatever it is that you're doing or conduit these will be much faster cutting and they'll zip right through it they're very easy to keep sharp and you can sharpen them yourself very easily um, with a diamond file and you can carry a diamond file with you so it makes it so much easier to me, spade bits are pretty much just strictly for construction use. You might find some other uses, but that's pretty much what they're designed to be used for. I think it's a better option than using forest curve bits. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Um, how many more cuts am I going to get out of using the Porter cable than I will the Harbor Freight forest bits? 
Um, I don't know, two to three times longer if you're guessing, or if I'm guessing rather. I know that the Porter Cable ones, they have to be, because I can tell from using them, they're probably made out of a much better grade steel than the ones coming up out of, you know, China. Now, the one is, is where do they come from, from Porter Cable? They came from China too, but for some reason, I can tell that the steel just seems to be better and holds an edge much, much longer. Um, that's just from my experience. If somebody else has got a different experience, drop it in the comment below. Uh, comment on here that the somebody else owns the Harbor Freight ones also. The box is sloppy. These bits don't fit in there, you know, very well. They bounce all over the place. Well, yeah, that's true. Now, for me, I made my own little uh, holder where I, they're visible and I don't have them in a box and tucked away. But, if, yeah, okay. I mean, I understand what you're saying about the box. I don't know what to say, but, yeah, you're right. But you're not buying the box. You're buying the tools. And, you know, like I said, they are able to be sharpened and they'll serve a purpose. But, the you know, the Porter cables, I just think, are better. Anyway. And it's still, they come with a box also. So if the box is important to you, maybe you should have gotten the Porter cables. Okay, so I went ahead and changed the picture back for the remainder, you know, of the questions and see if I can answer anybody else's concerns. An overall point of view on Harbor Freight. If you're an occasional user or just, hey, every once in a while you need to do something like that, you know, with the Forestner bit, I would tell you go ahead and get the Harbor Freight ones. If you want to spend... A little bit more money, I think Porter Cable is just a better way to go, but both of them will do the job. I mean, it's up to you. You've got $36.99 versus $52.99. So I guess it's all dependent on what you want to spend in relation to the quality of what you want to own. All right, any concerns on using these? Well, on both sets, yes. If you're using a drill press or a hand drill, anytime you can clamp it down, clamp it down. Um, if you're going to go and you need to make sure that that hole is perfectly smooth from the entry hole to the exit hole. Put a scrap piece of wood under it, clamp it down. As you bore and go through it and you go into that next piece of wood, you'll get much less tear out or much, wor or much less worry about tearing it out. Um, well, I noticed too on these cheap Harbor Freight ones, if you're going to use this on hard wood, I mean, as opposed to like Douglas fir or pine or something, you're going to dull that edge a lot faster. So learn to sharpen them. Get a diamond file. I'll do another video, or there's probably videos out there on how to sharpen forest bits with a diamond file. It's easy to do. It doesn't take that long. But you're going to sharpen more frequently on the Harbor Freight ones than you will on these Porter cables. That's my point. Um, okay, uh, another question is what is the shank size on the Porter cable? Well, it's 3 8 and I believe it's 3 eighths on the Harbor Freight too. You can double check by you know just going to the site and taking a look at it. And final thoughts on this is, okay, you want to buy better quality bits because you know that the, uh, the length of time between sharpening is going to be greater, but you don't want to go spend two, three, four, five hundred dollars, whatever it is, and you want to get away with something inexpensive. Well, then don't buy a whole set. Go out and buy just what you need, but just buy good quality bits. I mean, now... I'm not criticizing Milwaukee, DeWalt, or any of those. I don't own them. These are the two that I own. These are the two that I'm doing the review on. I'm just giving you my opinion on which one I think is the better set. Both of them you can get away with using. There's nothing wrong with either one. I just think that one is better for the money. And you do need to learn to sharpen them because the sharper you keep these, the smoother and easier they cut. Now you know the differences between the three main Forestner bits that are used. I'm the Home Handyman. I hope you click subscribe. Keep following me. Keep telling me what you like to see reviews on. I'll keep doing them. If you have a better suggestion or a better product when it comes to Forestner Bits, drop it in the comment below. I'll see you folks on the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.